meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance led by Commissioner Brown. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Welcome. <laughs> we're, we're all a little tired today. Yes. Welcome to the July 25th, 2017 general session. Franklin County Board of Commissioners. Um, we need an approval of the minutes of the June 13th, 2017 general session. So moved. Second. Moved and second in voting. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. Yes, have been approved. All right. Um, well, I feel like the last five or six days of having the county commissioners in town, I feel like there should be more pomp and circumstance to this morning's <laughs> meeting for some reason. Uh, a lot of pomp and circumstance over the last few days. Commissioner O'Grady, can I take a personal point of privilege yeah, absolutely. for a second? Please do. I, I just want to take a minute to, uh, one, just congratulate uh, Commissioner O'Grady and Commissioner Brown for really a job well done uh, with NACO. I, I just can't begin to explain to you what goes into uh, putting that kind of conference together, but more in, uh, importantly, hosting it. And I know uh, Commissioner Brown and I, um, we had our roles and, and certainly we did our part, but, but Commissioner O'Grady really deserves uh, a lot of recognition. You know, we had thousands of commissioners from across the country here, and while NACO sort of does a lot of the structure and sort of output, uh, there was a lot of work for the host to do, and Commissioner O'Grady really led that. And I just wanted to personally uh, publicly acknowledge the work that you did and I really thought it was um, just an outstanding conference. I heard nothing but good things about the conference and, and, and your leadership in, in carrying it out. So I just wanted to take the personal public moment to, to say thank you and uh, it's a job well done. add to that, uh, echo that sentiment exactly, but I also want to thank our team, our entire team that worked on this so long and hard, and kudos to everybody who volunteered and worked on this day after day. Um, you know, naming them I know I will forget some people, but uh, certainly Robin Devers, yeah. who headed up our team. Thank you to everybody yeah. at the county <coughs> who worked on this. Yeah. It, it was so good and so, I never heard a negative comment either. It was amazing. Yeah, I appreciate that with both, both of you guys. I appreciate the comments, but you know, the team, is they really stepped up. I mean, there's folks in the room that did it. Robin kind of Robin led the effort. It was kind of funny to hear our communications director and assistant director calling Robin boss all week. Uh, <laughs> uh, but she kind of was. I mean, she was in charge of everything. But uh, it wasn't just our staff. It was uh, experienced Columbus staff. Right. It was, you know, it was the whole community. We asked people to step up. It was the business community that stepped up and yeah. contributed the money. It was it was uh, everybody kind of stepped up and put the best face on uh, this community and yeah. and uh, yeah we heard the goal the goal when we when we decided to do this the goal was to show uh, show the rest of the country what we know about Franklin County and, and Columbus and, and what we all see and they saw it you know they they it was funny they came with um, this. Uh, without knowledge or, uh, or expectation of what Columbus and Franklin County is, and they left being amazed and blown away uh, by what we have here. Uh, I think the, the, if I have one regret, it's that that event that we did at the Ivory Room on Saturday night for the Board of Directors, uh, there were only 300 people there because it was a by invite only Board of Directors thing, and not, not all 2,000 to 2,500 people could have been there. Because to, to, to be able to be See in Maranova oh and look up the river during Rib Fest. And by the way, Saturday was a gloomy, ugly day. Mm -hmm. But that was Saturday evening at 6.30, 7 o'clock. Nice and the sun came out yeah. and there were all those people at Jazz and Rib Fest. 
and the river couldn't have looked better than it did that night. And they were looking up the river on a beautiful night at all those people on, on the riverfront uh, on a gorgeous night. And then, and then when you looked out the east side of the building, here we were, Franklin County Courthouse Complex in all its glory. And, and to top it all off, the Columbus Zoo brought all those baby and animals. Those, the penguin and the, they, the kangaroo. The, the, the folks that were there, yeah. they were all like, wow, this, is the, this place is cool. What a great view of the city. This is such a million dollar event. This place is gorgeous. And then they brought in baby penguins and baby <laughs> kangaroos and yeah. all those baby animals. And all of a sudden, everybody was like, oh, my God. So it was a, definitely a Chamber of Commerce moment right there. And, and, uh, and you know, it was just they, folks really stepped up. And so it was a, it was a great thing. And, and uh, Columbus had a lot to be proud of. And Franklin County had a lot to be proud of. And staff and, and folks really did it. So for those of you that are in the room, I mean, I know for the, a lot of you folks go home and, and take a good long nap tonight and, and go, to bed early, <laughs> go to bed early tonight. You know. yeah. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah, commissioner, <coughs> Commissioners, it was, I don't think I've ever been told by colleagues that you should toot, your, we should toot our horn more, or brag more about everything we had to offer. I literally had the county administrators from all over the country uh, were there, of course, and they were just uh, amazed at the things we've been able to do from an economic development standpoint, and even comments about the cleanliness of the city and and how organized and how uh, we have such a uh, diverse community of people blending together at uh, events like the Jazz and Rib Fest. Uh, so it, it really made me feel good to have people come up. And uh, last night, I, I felt like it was graduation day. <laughs> so many people were coming up, shaking my hand and saying, as administrator, you have you know so much to be proud of. I got so many compliments on our staff and their efforts. And again, uh, I, I think I have one of the best administrative assistance uh, in the country, uh, Carla Wallace, who was uh, responsible for uh, a number. Uh, we had to uh, organize. Tireless in her efforts. Um, we had over 200 uh, volunteer slots we were trying to fill. Uh, and that just took a lot of effort. And as I walked through the convention center, um, I just saw members of our team uh, the Franklin County staff smiling with blue t-shirts on. Yeah. You yeah. name one of our agencies, they were there. Yeah. Uh, our public affairs team, uh, uh, in this case, let Robin led this effort, uh, was brought on the team to uh, do this job, and, and Tyler, and, and Marty, and Mary Jane, and Deb, I, and I can't, like you I say, know. it's too many to name. <laughs> uh, I couldn't be prouder of our team. Uh, I'm not a, uh, I'm, I'm getting warming up to social media. I was proud of our team uh, at the awards. Um, we received five awards. Uh, our volunteers in the public service program was awarded. Our smart works program was awarded by NACO. Our compass, which is a, a, a collaboration between the domestic relations and juvenile court and child support enforcement. Our pathways program, where we're working in a, in our correction center uh, with uh, with women, you know, working on healthier lifestyle. Where do we end uh, as a community? We have so much to be proud of. Yes, we have challenges ahead, but I know from this conference that we do have a lot to be proud of. And I just want to genuinely say thanks to the entire Franklin County team. The Convention Facilities Authority got an award from the Arts and Culture Commission yeah. for all the artwork yes. in, the, in the Convention Facilities And the tour Authority. was so amazing. Yeah. It was, it was, it was a very, very good job. And, all, and a lot of kids in town got free cake last night because all those, yeah. uh, all those balloons, the balloons went out. All the balloons with cake everywhere. in it got loose. They did cake in, in a balloon. Helium filled balloons with cake inside them, and a bunch of balloons got loose and went up in the air. There were a couple dozen of them, so a lot of kids around town got free cake last night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, well, anyway, thank you to everybody for all your efforts. It was, it was a wonderful celebration of Columbus and Franklin County, and, and we have a lot to be proud of. And thank you to all the volunteers. It was it was fantastic, and and thanks to my colleagues for the nice comments. But you guys, you guys did a Great job, and, and you guys were great and gracious hosts. Car Marilyn gave a tour of the, of, the, of the courthouse. The folks from Kansas City, Kevin was hosting people all weekend. And, yeah. and the Scioto Mile tour. The Scioto Mile tour. tour. And, Children's you know, Hospital. I lost my voice amazing. on Saturday, and it hasn't come back yet. Yeah. 
So thank you, everybody, and, and uh, it was great. Anyway, I'll tell you what, one interesting thing, just real quick. I was on a panel uh, yesterday with um, uh, for uh, uh, credit analysis for you know municipalities and counties, and we were up there with uh, Austin. Uh, Texas and you know the southwestern part of this country is a growth mecca and, and it makes the Midwest look like we're going the other way but they were like with the exception of Franklin County and they had Franklin County uh, juxtaposed with um, Austin whatever what county is Austin I can't remember Travis, Travis, County. Travis oh, County Travis County, Travis yeah. County Texas yeah, yeah. Travis County and, and it was amazing to see us hanging with one of the growth explosion corridors in the country yeah. and Franklin County was right there. I mean the, the stats they had them lined up side by side and the stats were almost identical and it was just an amazing thing to see considering southwestern part of the country that is exploding in growth versus the Midwest which is not so much. So all, all of our friends from California was, were saying, I'd, I'd live here if it wasn't for January, February, March. Yeah, the weather, <laughs> the weather would, would challenge. And I would say, and I'd live out there if I could afford yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, thanks, everybody. Well, let's move on with our agenda. Uh, the Clerk of Courts. Resolution number 511-17, <laughs> resolution authorizing a contract lease renewal of office space for the Clerk of Course East Auto Title Branch in the amount of one dollar. Well, good, good, well, good morning. Good, to, uh, good morning, commissioners. <laughs> it, it's good to see witness one protection old program. Uh, I'm say, <laughs> it's good to see at least one old friend. I, I, I guess I kind of recognize the other. Uh, yeah, I'm getting that uh, quite frequently these days. That's an experiment. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Sean Reeder, fiscal officer for the Clerk of Courts, and with me I have Kenny Skeeton, director of auto title. Good to see you. Morning. Uh, the resolution today is a lease renewal with the Ohio Department of Public Safety Bureau of Motor Vehicles. Uh, the renewal is for 2,860 square feet of office space at the state's BMV facility located at 1583 Allen Creek Drive. Uh, the lease is a two-year term. Uh, the rent is one dollar per year. Move yeah. approval of 511-17. Second. Moved and second in voting. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Boyd? <coughs> yes. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. Resolution number 511-17 has been adopted. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Commissioner. Sure. Thank you. Take care, guys. Common Police Court. Resolution number 512-17, resolution authorizing a contract with the Ohio Department of Rehabilitation and Correction for the Community Corrections Prison Diversion 407 program in the amount of $3,584,324. Good morning, Commissioners. Jennifer Goodman, Director for the Court, and with me this morning is Lori Franceskin. She's our Chief Probation Officer. Um, this resolution approves a grant agreement renewal for the periods of state fiscal year 18 and 19. Um, it provides intensive supervision services for offenders and allows us to divert over the two-year period approximately 1,400 offenders from prison. Um, I would like to note that this grant agreement is 20% less than our state fiscal year 17 levels. However, the state has committed to fully funding that. Uh, so we'll be back <laughs> during the first right. quarter for uh, approval of a grant addendum. So that'll be back to the 100% of state fiscal year 17. Oh, this is good. Definitely. Thank you. And thank you, yes, for yesterday oh. helping out with that tour. It was our pleasure. Yes, that was great. They really appreciated it. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. I'll move approval of five twelve seventeen. Second. Moved and second in voting. Commissioner Brown. Yes. Commissioner Boyce. Yes. Commissioner O'Grady. Yes. Resolution number five twelve dash seventeen has been adopted. Resolution number 513-17, resolution authorizing a contract with the Ohio Department of, Re of Rehabilitation and Correction for the Community Corrections Jail Diversion 408 program in the amount of $581,924. This resolution is also for state fiscal year 18 and 19 and provides pretrial services for us to divert offenders from jail. Uh, we estimate to divert approximately 1,500 offenders during the two-year cycle. And similar to the last resolution, this is also reduced by 20%, but again, they've committed to fully fund. So we'll be back with two resolutions, actually, <laughs> during the first quarter. Great. Mm -hmm. Move approval of 513-17. Second. Moved and second in voting. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. Resolution number 513-17 has been adopted. 
Resolution number 514-17, Resolution authorizing a contract addendum with the Ohio Department of Rehabilitation and Correction for the Justice Reinvestment, Probation Improvement, and Incentive Grant Program in the amount of $413,267. This resolution approves a grant addendum to our state fiscal year 16 and 17 contract for this particular grant. Um, they're allowing us to use our unspent dollars from that grant period in fiscal year 18 and 19 um, as an incentive for meeting our performance goals. Well, this is good. Definitely. It's really good. It is. So that's, um, you know, we met all of our performance goals aside from one and um, the, they value each of those goals and that total came to 413,000 for the two year cycle. Good. Move approval of 514.17. Second. Moved and second in voting. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. Resolution number 514-17 has been adopted. Thank you very much, Commissioner. Thank you. Engineer. Public hearing. All right, so our first resolution, we're going to have a public hearing. Uh, Antoine, if you could uh, read it into the record. Yeah. Public hearing regarding the final hearing for establishing, altering, and widening of Alton and Darby Creek Road and Davis Road, Norwich Township, Franklin County, Ohio. Good morning, Commissioners. My name is Cornell Robertson, Franklin County Engineer. I'm Carla Mirable. Real, uh, I'm not a real estate anymore. Executive <laughs> assi Assistant <laughs> for the County Engineer. <laughs> Commissioners, this project is in the northwest part of the county in Norwich Township at the intersection of Alton and Darby Creek Road and Davis Road. It is a cooperative project including Franklin County, City of Hilliard, and a developer. This project will include the installation of a new traffic signal. All right, is there anyone here that would like to speak on this public hearing? Being that there's no one, we'll close the public hearing. And so, Antoine, if you could read that into the record again. Resolution, resolution number 515-17, final hearing for establishing, alternating, and widening of Alton and Darby Creek Road and Davis Road, North Township, Franklin County, Ohio. Commissioners, I may add that this resolution will allow us to move forward with the project, hire appraisers, and acquire right-of-way as needed. Great. I'll move approval of 515-17. Second. Moved and second in voting. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. Resolution number 515-17 has been adopted. Resolution <laughs> number 516-17, H.R. Gray and Associates Incorporated Consulting Engineers appointed to assist the Franklin County Engineer in providing inspection services for the bridge epoxy striping project, Franklin County, Ohio, in the amount of $82,200. Commissioners, this project will include the replacement of striping on 14 bridges spread out throughout Franklin County. We utilized the qualifications-based selection process and chose H.R. Gray as the consultant to help us with the inspection of this project. Move approval of 516-17. Second. Moved and second in voting. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. Resolution number 516-17 <coughs> has been adopted. Resolution number 517-17, resolution authorizing a contract with Resource International Incorporated Consultants to provide engineering services in the amount of $45,000. Commissioners, this resolution uh, recommends approval of a professional services contract with Resource International uh, to provide on-call subsurface utility uh, engineering services. Uh, Resource International is a local consultant and also a female business enterprise. We've worked with them in the past and uh, funding will come from the county uh, engineers auto and gas tax fund, not the general fund. Move for passage of 517-17. Second. Moved and second in voting. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. Resolution number 517-17 has been adopted. Resolution number 518-17. Report first of the Franklin County engineer establishing sums of compensation for a portion of the owners of property abutting the Melrose Avenue and Lamont Avenue drainage improvement, Franklin County, Ohio, in the amount of $4,945. Commissioners, this is a CIP project in the northeast part of the county in Clinton Township along Mel Melrose Avenue and Lamont Avenue. 
As mentioned, this is a drainage improvement project. Uh, this resolution is the first compensation and damages for um, the residents along that project. There are three, this uh, compensation is for three of the four property owners. Compensation was based on a um, appraisal, fair market value by a licensed appraiser. I'll move for approval of resolution 518.17. Second. Moved and second in voting, Commissioner Brown. Yes. Commissioner Boyce. Yes. Commissioner O'Grady. Yes. Resolution number 518-17 has been adopted. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thanks, guys. PMA, Emergency Management Agency. Resolution number 519-17. Resolution authorizing a contract with AMK Services LLC for the provision of the delivery and supply of single band and dual band marks capable portable radios for Homeland Security Region 4 in the amount of $165,116. Good morning. Good morning, Commissioners. Jeff Young representing Franklin County Emergency Management and Homeland Security. This resolution is part of the State Homeland Security 2016 grant process, uh, fully funding purchase of uh, 98 radios to be distributed among the 14 counties um, within Homeland Security Region 4. It fills out a, an interoperable communication gap identified primarily in the rural counties. Um, as you would imagine, you know, the, the primary gaps of the urban or the metro counties was fulfilled first, and this is just a continual build out of that. So primarily these radios will, will be distributed to those other counties. Great. Move for passage of 519.17. Second. Moved and second in voting. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. Resolution number 519-17 has been adopted. Resolution number 520-17. Resolution authorizing a contract with Integrated Solutions Consulting, LLC, to provide services for updating and improving the natural hazards mitigation plan in the amount of $74,280.42. Commissioners, at this time, I'm, we are requesting that this, uh, this resolution be tabled pending final contract language approval with the vendor. Well, I will move to table. For how long do you uh, We really want to get rolling on this, so I would... I would indefinitely? Indefinitely. Okay. I don't, I don't want to speak for legal or procurement, so I don't want to tie their hands, but okay. we, we want to move expeditiously on this. I will move to table indefinitely Resolution 5 2017. Second. Moved and second, <coughs> excuse me, moving and second in voting. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. Resolution number 520 17 has been tabled indefinitely. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff. Franklin County Data Center. Resolution number 521-17, resolution authorizing a contract with TSG Partners Limited for staff augmentation services in the amount of $119,600. Good morning, Commissioners. Julie Lest with the Franklin County Data Center. Um, this resolution would approve a contract with TSG Partners for information technology engineer services. Um, it is for staff augmentation of our infrastructure services, including our active directory which is the backbone of your security and who can access what applications within the um, data network. So pending any questions, I do request your approval of this resolution. Move for passage of 521-17. Second. Moved and second in voting. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. Resolution number 521-17 has been adopted. Thank you, Commissioners. Developmental disabilities. Resolution number 522-17, resolution declaring intent to proceed with the question of a renewal tax levy for the purpose of servicing children and adults who have developmental disabilities to the electors of Franklin County at the November 7, 2017 general election. Good morning. Well, good morning, commissioners. I have with me the superintendent of the Board of Developmental Disabilities, Jed Morrison, and we're here to... Uh, let you know that the I'm also chairman of the Franklin County Levy Review Committee and uh, I'm here to let you know that the Levy Committee has reviewed the request of the Franklin County Board of Dis Developmental Disabilities uh, request that the county place a levy on the November 7th 2017 ballot. 
Mr. Uh, Hemphill, we, we certainly all know you and know your reputation, but for the purposes of the record, would you mind, for the, the audience, would you mind introducing yourself? Sure. I am Jesse Hemphill. And, and, and again, I chair yeah. the seven member labor view, view committee that's been appointed by the commissioners. Thank you, sir. Sure. Well, the uh, committee has reviewed the labor request by the board and are recommending to the commissioners that the uh, levy, the 3.5 mil levy, be placed on the November 7th ballot for a period of 10 years for tax collections beginning in January of 2019. The approval of the levy will allow the uh, Board of uh, Developmental Disabilities to continue its services to the residents of this, the county that have the developmental disabilities and um, allow them to process or be, continue to process their services to the population uh, for the next 10 years. It's important to note that the levy is a renewal levy and not a, a, a tax increase and that no additional cost to the taxpayers will be incurred by the approval of this levy. And with that, I'm recommending that the commissioners approve the levy to be placed on the November 7th, 2017 ballot. And uh, Jed, do you have anything else you'd like to add? Uh, yes, commissioners uh, Jed Morris and superintendent of the Board of Developmental Disabilities and uh, offer a word of thanks to Jesse and his committee and certainly your staff for their work on this. And I know I speak for thousands of uh, kids and adults who have developmental disabilities. I know that you have all visited and, and are well aware of our services. Uh, for your support and thank you for that. Um, this, as Jesse said, is it is a renewal. It represents absolutely no new taxes whatsoever and uh, our board I think is very proud of the fact that they've been able to maintain the discipline to allow for this at this time. So we really appreciate your consideration and again thanks to uh, the committee and certainly to your staff for the good work that they've done. I think it speaks volumes, uh, Jed, to uh, um, of your your staff and, and your folks that you're uh, able to, to project out over the next 10 years and, and still be able to say uh, with all certainty that you're, you're going to be able to do this without any increase to the, to the taxpayer and, and I think that's fantastic. Uh, the work that, that you guys do and your folks do is, is amazing, it's commendable. I've, I've been to several of your facilities. I was just, as I told you when I saw you last, I was just at one of your partner agencies, the Heinzerling Foundation. And, uh, you guys work with them. and partnership and, and so the work that you guys do on behalf of the community is, is fantastic. Jesse, uh, the work that you do with the Levy Review Committee for all of our levy agencies is, is a fantastic task and we appreciate all that you do to uh, help us out with that. So thank sure. you. Sure, thank you. I would give uh, credit also to all of our 1,200 staff who I think do outstanding work and one of those people is our Chief Business Officer, Dot Yeager, who is here as well and she has done uh, excellent work as it relates to a number of things including our finances. We really appreciate all you do and I know for the kids that that I've gone to read to I it's amazing the work that you're able to do and the levy review committee all volunteers who spend countless time going through all of our social service levies. Thank you. What I'd like to say, and I'd be remiss if I didn't say kudos to the OMB staff that assisted us in generating the report that was provided to you. I will move for passage of Resolution 522-17. Second. Moved and second in voting. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. Resolution number 522-17 has been Thank adopted. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Good job and family services. Resolution number 523-17. Resolution approving an amendment to the subaward agreement with the Center for Healthy Families Incorporated for teen parenting and pregnancy prevention services, an increase of 75000 for a total amount of 325000 Good morning, Commissioners Joy Bivens, Franklin County Job and Family Services. Um, again, congratulations on a um, very successful conference, very impactful, I believe. You have to excuse me because um, I'm on zero today just because of the, and I know you all must be exhausted as well. This resolution will approve an amendment to contract with the Center for Healthy Families to provide teens with parenting 
and pregnancy prevention um, services. The Center for Healthy Families has provided coaching and support to move more than 800 teen families in Franklin County towards economic sufficiency since 2009. We have funded their parent education support group for the last four years. This is a, um, a, a school-based program that is housed in Briggs, Independence, Walnut Ridge, and I'm sure there's a couple of others that I am missing, and there are uh, in the Center for Healthy Families hosts one as well, as well as um, West High School. Um, we believe that this program is impactful, and if I could just take a moment just to kind of talk about some data, because we talk about, you know, many times when we, we contract and you, you want results, but I think more importantly, you want impact, mm -hmm. and I think this data speaks to impact. We know that age and education attainment can have a significant influence on birth outcomes. A new report for the Center for Community Re Solutions reaffirmed that teen mothers have the highest rate of poor birth outcomes in Ohio, 8.9% low birth weights, 13.6% prematurity. Under our last contract, Centers for Healthy Family reported more than 90% of the teens that participated in this program delivered healthy babies. Teen parents have participated in the program also have graduation rates nearly 30%, 30 points higher than the national average, 69% compared to the 40%. I believe, again, this information is more than just results. It's impact because we want to move that, that um, unfortunate situation regarding, you know, low, low birth weights um, and, and, and infant mortality. We want to move the needle on that, and this contract speaks to that. The supplemental TANF funding will allow um, Center for Healthy Families to service an approximately additional 40 families, bringing their number of services to nearly 200 teens that they've already serviced. Pending any questions, I will ask for your approval of this um, contract resolution. Any comments? Well, I really said my piece in briefing, but uh, I'll just say again, I really appreciate and value the data link to the legislative request because it really allows the public to also understand why we make certain investments and why we engage certain partners. And, and this is one of those where, uh, again, these are people that could be vulnerable in um, in then fit a number of other statistics in, and here they've been caught, and we're trying to, in terms of the catch basin, <coughs> and we're trying to, to uh, give them a chance to be successful, and the data shows that it works. Absolutely, thank this you. Makes sense. Sure. And this is real impact on people. Yes, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> thank yes. you for that. I will move for passage of resolution 523.17. Second. Moved and second in voting. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Commissioner O'Grady? Yep. Resolution number 523-17 has been adopted. Thank you. Thank Thanks. you. Right. <coughs> Economic Development Planning. Resolution number 524-17. Resolution authorizing an agreement with Calgon Carbon to partially fund a super sack recycling project <coughs> in the amount of $5,700. Morning, Commissioners. James Schimmer, Director of Economic Development and Planning. Uh, commissioners, uh, we applied and have received a uh, 2017 market development grant from uh, the Ohio Department of uh, Environmental Protection uh, to partially fund uh, Calgon Carbon's Super SAC Recycling Project. Um, Calgon Carbon has been a uh, longtime uh, business in our community. Uh, they uh, provide activated carbon and another, a number of other chemicals uh, which go into water purification uh, process and uh, a number of different other activities. But they, uh, they have bulk commodity and they basically use uh, these large uh, sacks that are made out of uh, plastic uh, to move those things. Um, so what was happening was uh, those sacks were not being recycled in a, an efficient manner. So um, they are basically putting a, a new machine in uh, which consolidates those bags um, and um, will make it a lot easier for them to be recycled. Uh, we figure that uh, the purchase of the baler is going to divert uh, approximately 20 tons a year uh, from the landfill. So this is a good deal. And uh, it is a matching program, so uh, the 5700 is matched by the company directly. Uh, and again, it goes back to our environmental protection uh, policy that we want to enforce and look at. So uh, if you have no other questions, I'd ask for your approval of the resolution this morning. 
I move for approval of resolution 52417 and thank you. Thank you. Second. Moved and seconded by <coughs> Commissioner Brown. Yes. Commissioner Boyce. Yes. Commissioner O'Grady. Yes. Resolution number 524-17 has been adopted. Thank you, Commissioners. Thanks, Jim. Human resources. Resolution number 525-17. Resolution approving personnel actions. Good morning, Commissioners. Rob Young representing Human Resources. Of the following personnel actions this week, Child Support Enforcement Agency, one suspension, Department of Job and Family Services, one suspension, and Public Facilities Management, one suspension. Pending any questions, request approval of the resolution. Move approval of 525-17. Second. Moved and second in voting. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. Resolution number 525-17 has been adopted. Thank you, Commissioner. Thanks, Rob. Purchasing. Resolution number 526-17, resolution approving purchases with various Franklin County agencies in the amount of $450,791.74. Good morning, Commissioners. Carl Cuse representing the Purchasing Department. The resolution before you requests for approval of 89 purchase orders. These purchase orders have been pre-certified as availability funded by the County Auditor. Pending any questions, we recommend their approval. Move approval of 52617. Second. Moved and second in voting. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. Resolution number 526-17 has been adopted. Thank you. All right. Um, <clears throat> under the Board of Commissioners, we have a resolution that needs to be removed from the table. So can I get a motion to remove resolution 51017 from the table? I will move for resolution 51017 to be brought back from the table. Second. Second. Moved and seconded in voting. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. Resolution number 510-17 has been removed from the table. All right. Can you please read resolution 510-17 into the record? Resolution number 510-17, resolution establishing the Franklin County Correction Center Construction Inclusion Plan. Good morning, Commissioners. Chris Long, Deputy Administrator. Um, uh, this board, as you know, is in the process of building a new uh, correctional facility uh, out at uh, Fisher Road. And the board has uh, continued to express through multiple resolutions uh, its intent to develop diverse solutions to the challenges and barriers that hinder sustainable access to equal opportunity. Uh, this county and this board has consistently expressed uh, its uh, desire and commitment to having a workforce and participation in this project that reflects our community to the maximum extent possible. Uh, this resolution, as you know, was tabled last week, and I'll uh, defer to my colleague for further conversation about uh, uh, where we stand right now and, and bring additional information to the board. Good morning, Commissioners. Kena Smith, Deputy County Administrator. To refresh your memory, um, the construction inclusion plan sets for the framework for creating opportunity and jobs for all of our residents and building the new construction center, uh, excuse me, the new correction center. Um, at its essence, it's an accountability plan um, that frames our intent to perform extensive outreach, acquiring um, and supporting labor participation and pipeline development as well as utilizing um, our socially and economically disadvantaged local small and emerging businesses. Um, last week you asked us to engage in some um, outreach and some meetings um, with uh, Ms. Watson and the NAACP. Um, we did um, uh, reach out to the group. Uh, we wanted to uh, meet with them immediately following, and I know that they did as well, but no, I was saying, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh, no, I was just saying that we had uh, wanted to meet, and I think that you guys at the time were unable to because of time constraints on that particular day. So we had reached out um, from the county administrator's office and um, were unable to uh, pull that meeting together. Um, 
uh, clarification. Um, Ms. Watson had wanted some clarification on um, what we were going to be discussing and uh, she did send us and she was going to respond by email uh, but then she ended up replying by voicemail on that on that on I think it was the next day that um, so um, and she had indicated that she did intend to um, go another route mm -hmm. um, um, and would provide a proposal in writing we did receive that proposal um, in writing we received it yesterday afternoon mm -hmm. um, and we are in the process of reviewing that proposal um, also, another development would be that on yesterday, um, I see that um, our county prosecutor um, is Mr. O'Brien is in the seat. Good morning, um, Mr. Um, O'Brien. Um, we had a meeting with uh, Assistant um, Prosecuting Attorney Nick Sulis on yesterday and he shared with us that uh, the determination was made that uh, the Franklin County Board of Commissioners could actually, we actually could develop aspirational goals for our project. Um, this was a, a new development um, and it prompted us to uh, amend the uh, construction inclusion plan to include language tasking the construction inclusion team um, to develop aspirational contracting goals. Um, we amended the plan with the following language. The construction inclusion team will be tasked with developing inclusion contracting goals for the project and construction with guidance from the Franklin County Prosecuting, Prosecuting Prosecutor's Office, a Prosecuting Attorney's Office, provided July 2017. These goals will be aspirational in nature. It is intended that the goals will be well reasoned and aligned with outcomes of similar projects in our region. So you may ask what are aspirational goals? So they've been described in many ways. We've been doing our research and we find that uh, there are many and varied definitions, but they are generally described as targets or benchmarks which convey an intention to um, achieve an established percentage um, of socially and economically disadvantaged business utilization. Um, they've been used in various circumstances, for example, some with and some without a predicate study. Um, they've been used project-based and they've also been used program-based. So there is a lot of opportunity there for us to um, employ that, employ uh, an aspirational goal on this project. When we, um, in development of the plan and, and when we met last week, we did make that point that um, we were not permitted to uh, have goals. Um, however, uh, again, we've been brought this new development. We think it is a good one. We're excited. We would like to develop a community-based aspirational goal and ensure that we are engaging the community and helping us to put that goal together. Um, um, and therefore, uh, we'd like to use the construction inclusion team, that format that's found in the plan, um, to facilitate that conversation um, and to facilitate the, 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 the development of um, those goals um, on the uh, provision of goods and services on the project, as well as subcontracting. Um, we believe that this approach um, um, will engage the community um, in a way that's meaningful and significant. Um, it will keep us on track to uh, this very first and what some have said is a historical marker for uh, you commissioners in establishing um, your very first construction inclusion te team and plan. Um, and uh, we believe that this approach actually, uh, instead of, you know, um, you know, sometimes we think of, you know, there's just a certain slice of the pie that has to be cut up so many ways. And when you try to cut it up, you know, uh, in, in, in so many small pieces and it's not mean, we, we, we believe in making the pie, the slice of the pie bigger. And we think that this approach will help us make the slice of the pie bigger so that everyone will get a, a bigger share and that we will aid um, our socially and economically disadvantaged businesses in addition 
Um, we believe that um, the job creation aspects of this plan are they're enormous. They're the, they're the most important part. Um, I've had many conversations in the past week with um, small businesses mm -hmm. who have indicated that um, they um, appreciate what it is that we are doing. But one of the most, um, I think, impactful conversations I had was with um, our own director, Joy Bivens, who talked about uh, the impact that this plan could have on her, um, her client base. And I was wondering if it would be okay if uh, we allow Joy to speak for just a moment on, on that. Is that possible? She's not sitting up here with us or whatever, but um, she spoke. She spoke about it so eloquently that um, I, I was hoping that she would be able to share with us this morning. Correct. Good morning. I'm sorry, I wasn't prepared, but I I, I do have something, you know. One of the things that, as a director <coughs> of 350,000 people who receive benefits, you want to see them move, you know, upward as it relates to economic mobility. And right now, we have about 600 to 700 people receiving cash assistance, over 100,000 people receiving SNAP. We have 350,000 people receiving um, Medicaid. 23,000 23, um, kids. <coughs> zero, you know, zero to twelve receive, you know, publicly funded child care services, and what that tells us is that these parents need something to supplement their income. Many of the parents have to make decisions on promotions in order to take a promotion or not take a promotion based on if they get a raise. The raise is going to put them in a benefits cliff, and you know, unfortunately, I'm, you know, I'm not as eloquent as Ken, and I didn't read the plan and you know all that. I stand here for poor people. And all I want to see, if, the, if this is going to help my 350,000 customers, that's, and, it's, and it's going to take them out of the benefits cliff, I see it as a good plan. And that's all I know. Thank In you. In simplest Jim. form. Yeah. Good, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks. I have, um, <clears throat> I have speaker slips here. We've had four folks that have indicated that they want to speak. Um, so I will call them in the order that they have signed in. Um, and the first is Nana Watson. Do we have we have a three minute limit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, Do I we think, have a timekeeper. Oh uh, yeah, Mar Marty always is Marty. our timekeeper. I think everybody's familiar with our. They've all spoke. They all spoke last week. The three, the first three did. Uh, so everybody's familiar. So yeah. Good morning, commissioners. Nana Watson, president, Columbus branch of the NAACP. Last Tuesday, several people spoke against the diversity and inclusion plan for the jail and the forensic center. You tabled it. Today, the NAACP is requesting your consideration to allow the NAACP to provide sufficient input prior to your vote. I did mail you our comments along with others. I'm not sure if you received them, however, Ms. Smith said that she did. Um, the inclusion plan developed by the county administrator does not represent best practices that are being utilized throughout the country to achieve inclusion. This plan should be written by a third party that is an expert in this field with input from the community and the county prosecutor's office so that it stays within the framework of the current law. The plan identifies other groups, yet there is no data showing they have been victims of discrimination. Again, the federal guidelines for purchasing and procurement state the following groups are protected. Minorities, women, veterans, and economically disadvantaged. A specific plan should be written for each, each individual project based on the scope of the project. We understand two bid packages have been sent to those eligible to participate in the project. We are requesting the process that occurs after bids have been received. Based on our research, you will be briefed on the selection and vote in October on the contracts who will be utilized. Why is it so critical that the document be voted on now? What is the actual bidding schedule for both projects? We are requesting to view construction manager bid schedule to see if it warrants the urgency to rush through an inclusion plan as Mr. Wilson and Ms. Long are pushing for. In conversation with Prosecutor Ron O'Brien, he did share some creative ways in which goals can be assigned. Ms. Smith addressed that. 
We do plan to meet with him to discuss our concerns as it relates to those goals. Ms. Smith, we did receive your email where you referenced Prosecutor O'Brien aspiration goals he shared with you and others. We will request the prosecutor provide us in written form his thoughts on the goals. It's always better to hear it firsthand rather than a third party. Please understand we are not against the new build. We strongly believe there needs to be more in-depth conversation about the plan. We want the project to be successful for all concerned black businesses. We understand that some black businesses are in support of the diversity inclusion plan. We say to them, you may be misinformed. Lastly, the NAACP has kept within their mission to fight for social injustices. And if no other black businesses ever stand with us, we will continue to push forward in seeking equality for all black people. I leave you with a quote from W.E.B. Du Bois, to be a poor man is hard but to be a poor race in the land of dollars is the very bottom of hardships. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Thanks, Nana. Terrell Mock. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning commissioners. Um, Terrell Mock of the Minority Independent Contractors Alliance. And the minority is economic. It's not race-based. It's not uh, gender. It's basically economic. And I deal with the very hardest to serve. I deal with a lot of uh, Joy Bivens clients, TANF. We did a lot at the schools this summer trying to get teenagers uh, allocated or interested in the construction trades. I'm a general contractor. I'm a residential contractor. I've done work for the city. I've done work for the state. I've done work. So I'm not a novice at this. Uh, my history comes back from um, Northeast Career Center. I went there at, in vocational trade and construction and horticulture. That's what got me into construction. I've been in it since. Um, most 80 to 90 percent of MICA members, which we have several hundred, are either ex-felons or come from the very low economic status. And these are typically the parents of the kids that are probably on TANA. And they are struggling to reach that livable wage Thing. I think this is an excellent opportunity for our members to get some contracts. But historically, when we deal with the union side, it's very difficult for them to be able to participate. I even have one of our contractor members who's paid tens of thousands as signatory to a union in mechanicals. He says the same thing, that when he gets a bid, it's either short notice or once he does get it, he has, uh, it's the same day. He doesn't have time enough. To, he hasn't received any work, so he can't hire any of our members because you have to be in a union in order to get the training. So we can't do outside training. My goal as, as president and CEO of MICA is to make sure training. you got a short term. This project is supposed to be finished in 2018. Tell me how in 24 months that you're going to get enough people trained on union labor guidelines and qualifications from this population to participate on that program. It's not going to happen, period. What you can do, though, is make sure there's enough training for the next projects coming up that they are trained by that time. I haven't seen a program in 24 months that's going to have them ready, willing, and able for union standards. Uh, to be able to participate on this program. So let's be real about it. Who has that capability of bringing them from zero right now? This conversation should have had, should have been had, and the training should have been out there prior to this date. So uh, in short, my main thing is training. I've trained from impact. I've trained kids. I graduated people from Columbus State. Some are working with Kokosi. Some are working with Elford. So there is they can be successful, but when you're dealing with a union, there's, there's training dollars. All I want to know is who's going to train, when are they going to train, and how are they going to train. And pretty simple, that's it for, as far as Mike is concerned. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next we have Al Washington. Mr. Washington. Oh, there <coughs> Washington from Dayton, Ohio, Montgomery County, Ohio. Good 
Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I went through a long introduction last time, and um, I said what I try to do is to to advise communities across the state. And really, ran into some irony this morning. Run into Louis Smoot. Run into Otto Beatty, who just walked in the door. I didn't invite them, <laughs> but to run into them. I don't handle the lot. The first lawsuit when we were sued, Minority Business Enterprise, and what he won. Louis Smoot has been beneficiary of some of the earlier activities that I talked about at the State of Yoke Coordinator. Last week when I was here, I listened to you. You said you want to get these things accomplished. And it was clear that you meant that. But you, have said, you said some other things. We talked about we can't do goals. Well, in my mind, very quickly, I knew that not to be true. But you've got to go through the process of finding that out. But I, so what I spent a lot of time doing when I was counseling and advising them during the week was spent time on that issue. So what we did is we kind of created an organization that I called it. I don't know if you, what you got and what you didn't get because mm -hmm. we've been running back and forth mm -hmm. with each other and it's not been easy when you're trying to get all of this stuff crammed into a seven day schedule. In fact, we wanted to have all of this stuff back to you by yesterday. I've got hard copies of... I've got mine. If you got go. that, and it's I looked at it. Mm -hmm. There we go. Um, but I'm, my, my concern having served other legislative bodies is if, if you know a document to be flawed, why do you move forward with a flawed document? I would say fix it before you go forward. There's a process, some, some processes that really are not that difficult. Um, there's been some reluctance, some resistance, but by the sa at the same token, it can indeed be done. It can be done in the time frame but does not compromise the schedule for this project. The reality is we've got a problem already. We've got <coughs> be it on the street where we don't have all of the standards and specifications in. That can be, that, though all of those things can be remedied. And I talk with a very, from a very narrow vantage point and I, I took guidance from you guys. Can we do goals and timetables? Can we create a reasonable plan? <coughs> and that's essentially what your intentions, your outcomes, very clear. You've, you're looking for some justice like, like other folks do. That's all you talked about. But you, you were looking at what had previously been identified as obstacles. And thus they were being avoided as opposed to being repaired. I hear. I, find, I didn't know about, by the way, because I'm bouncing back and forth between here and Dayton. I was not aware of the conversation with the prosecutor where that matter had even been straightened out. So, but again, we spent two days putting this stuff together for you to make sure we first got past that hurdle. That's, if you look at any of those programs, where the, that have been successful, there are critical elements in each of them. To go forward with a program that lacks the critical elements to, for success, that makes sense. If I, the only thing I would ever say, if you're gonna vote on something, let it be a good something. To vote on a, to vote to say let's continue a flawed document, <coughs> in my judgment, is not a recommendation that I would make to my Thank you very much, and I appreciate, you. I appreciate, you know how you go in the room sometime and your stomach can tell you that they're about the right, about the right thing. They may not know the best methods, but I'm comfortable they're about the right thing, and I, felt that way last week. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Commissioner O'Grady, President O'Grady, commissioners. 
Uh, if I may have a, a point to make a couple clarifications. Here's one more speaker. I'd rather do it now. I'd, um, I'd rather do it now. Uh, I just want to make a couple uh, clarifications. Uh, this project, um, due to the desire to do it right, uh, the project schedule will go into 2019. Under the most aggressive scenario, this project will go into the third quarter of 2019 uh, concerning both the Franklin County Correction Center as well as the Franklin County uh, Forensic Center. Also, um, I respectfully uh, have hearing uh, the feedback here, uh, but I again, as I stated last week, um, this plan uh, provides a framework and passage of this plan at whatever time is about starting to get the work done. This document uh, calls for the creation of a construction inclusion team and the flexibility is built within this team to stop talking and be able to start working uh, by bringing all parties together um, to meet and get beyond the exchange of emails. It is critical for our community to come together as this plan calls for. Um, if this plan would have passed last week, um, the revelation of the ability to um, develop aspirational goals as we learned yesterday, we would have still been able to do that. This plan is it's about getting to work. It's about working in good faith. Um, and I think that I just want to make that clear for the record that if this plan is approved, uh, it will not prevent the work from being done uh, to meet the goals that are, that are set out um, after the inclusion team does its work. The key is to do the work uh, and not delay, to come together in good faith, um, to allow county administration to reach out to all the talent uh, within the community, uh, business, labor, and all of the groups that have an interest in doing better than Franklin County has done as it relates to construction projects. Okay. Thank, Thank you. Thanks, Kevin. Uh, we also have Dr. Iris Cooper. Good morning, Good morning. Commissioners. Um, my name is Dr. Iris Cooper, and I am a small business consultant. Um, I've been in um, small business pretty much all of my career. Um, my study for the doctorate was on entrepreneurship and disadvantaged businesses sustainability. Um, what I've learned uh, over my career um, that is that small businesses become resilient through experience, through inclusion, and that cuts through industry, it cuts through race, it cuts through gender, it cuts through all of the, the components that tend to divide us. Um, my previous position as Director of Entrepreneurship and Small Business for the State of Ohio demonstrated that you can be successful if everybody is at the table. You can be successful if everyone has the tools especially populations that have been left out of the discussion. And um, I just wanted to say that I am in total support of this project. I am willing to, to share best practices of what I've learned about entrepreneurship globally. And um, I encourage you to think in terms of the future, not where we are today, but where could we be as a community if everybody was on the same step of the ladder. Thank you. I appreciate that. And I think what we are attempting to do here is to make sure that everybody, underrepresented groups and disadvantaged groups are at the table and that's what this framework is designed to do. So thank you for your comments. Dr. Cooper, thank you for your comments. I appreciate it. You know, there's a couple other people in the room who have some uh, authority on this subject that I'd actually like to uh, call up uh, and, and get their thoughts on. Um, uh, Mr. Washington referenced uh, Mr. Beatty and Mr. Smoot, but we also have Dorsey Hager from uh, the uh, um,
Columbus building and construction trades. I don't really care which order you three would like to go in, but if I would certainly, I think my colleagues would agree with yeah, me. I'm good. I think the folks in, in the audience would, would probably agree with that as well. If you care to, Mr. Beatty, Mr. Smoot, Mr. Hager, I would l love to hear from the three of you if you'd like to take the microphone. Uh, we invite you. You don't have to. But we invite you three, the three of you. <laughs> I, I didn't think Dorsey would mind jumping to the microphone, but Otto and, and oh, Lewis. Oh, he's so shy. I yeah. know. You guys Otto all know I'm shy and impressive. They all are. Yeah. Um, Could you touch on the training? Yeah. yeah. Um, please, can you introduce yourselves? Yeah. You My name is Dorsey Hager. I'm the uh, Executive Secretary Treasurer of the Columbus and Central Ohio Building and Construction Trades Council. And I apologize. I'll try to keep this brief because I know we're at three minutes. But just a couple things to touch on. I know a lot has been talked about this jail because that's the topic of the discussion and I know a lot has been talked about the memorandum of understanding, community benefit agreement, project labor agreement, wh whatever we choose to, to call it, we're calling it an MOU, but I, I appreciate the focus on this project, but we also need to look down the road in large scale and I'm going to use an example here. This project labor agreement that's been crafted by the commissioners and approved by legal counsel is very similar, if I'm right, Lewis, if I can speak for you, to the agreement that we used on Hollywood Casino. Very similar. And the inclusion program, some of the community outreach was not included in that agreement, but the unions that I represent were very active in getting out in the community and recruiting, you know, underadvantaged, disadvantaged, unemployed you know, in this community. One of the things that we've done, and I'm going to speak about the city for one second and kind of bring it back. One of the things that we've done under the leadership of Mayor Ginther is we had a, uh, a building trades job fair last year, and usually our job fairs are 20, 30, maybe 40 people. It was very publicized. We had over 275 people attend this job fair. One of the best stories to come out of that job fair were not only 8th, 9th, 10th, and 11th graders, that were coming and putting their hands in cement, uh, wiring, seeing some plumbing stuff. But we had a young man that was there whose kids were sophomores and juniors in high school. So this guy was probably 34 to 36. And he said, I'm a residential electrician in the city. I've been working for a contractor for 10 years. I make $13 an hour. He goes, I was just back in the back talking to IBW 683. A first year apprentice starts off at 1461 for them and a journey person is around $30 an hour plus a full benefit package. Is this just for high school kids or can I? No. And I took him back. He met with the outreach coordinator. The next day, he went to work for one of their signatory contractors. So I guess I'll tie this back. This, this jail is very important. This is a large project. But there's so much other work out there that I'm sure Lewis would say this because I sat on a roundtable discussion a couple years ago at Columbus State where this was being discussed. There's so much other work out there that we're in a unique situation right now. The baby boomers are starting to retire. There's not a lot of kids, young adults, that are interested in the building trades programs, but that's starting to change. And the economy is doing incredible. 98, 99, 2000, I was just talking to somebody out in the hallway about this. We had LTV Steel. We had a new brew house at Anheuser-Busch. We had a $225 million renovation at Ohio Stadium. And we were busy. That is a blip compared to now. That is a blip. And I'm talking about active projects. I'm not talking about potential projects. We're looking at a Facebook data center in New Albany, $1.2 billion. Foxcom was here all week last week. They make parts for Apple, Samsung, cell phones. They're looking at a project, eight to $11 billion. I hope you're not recording this because this next part, I don't want to be recorded, but if you are, just and don't, don't share it. And don't say it. Yeah. <laughs> and don't say it. I won't mention the name. I had somebody call me last Monday, cold call me, and said, I need to meet with you tomorrow. And I said, impossible. My day's booked. I can't meet with you. He said, that's really too bad because I represent a company from Southeast Asia that's looking at acquiring property in Central Ohio, Franklin County to build a $2.5 billion manufacturing plant. And I said, oh, Foxcom. He goes, no, this isn't Foxcom, but I can't tell you who I represent. I said, you know what? I think I can find a hole in my schedule for you tomorrow. <laughs> so that's the point I'm trying to make is 
you know, if, if we do, I've talked to Keena about this and Chris, if we do community outreach, if we do round table discussions to let people know what the building trades does, and I'm going to touch on the training here for a second, then I'll sit down, um, job fair so we can attach these people with these jobs, and also minority contractors. If we can get minority contractors in the fold, you know, I've signed several contractors as a business manager in my local union. One of their biggest concerns is hiring, firing, unemployment, training. The building trades unions take care of all that. The businesses can hire and fire who they want. When they send somebody back, especially right now, there's a very low chance you're going to play unemployment on that person because they're going to go right back out for a signatory contractor. Also, the training is all done by us because of joint apprenticeship and the standards set by the Ohio State Apprenticeship Committee. So just a couple of stats real quick that were passed on to me that I want to share. Um, I had these sent to me by Act Ohio and Ohio State Building Trades. Currently, there's 10,550 registered apprentices in the state of Ohio. The Building Trades Apprenticeship Programs, 8,730. 83% of the registered <coughs> apprentices in this state are our apprentices. We're the ones that are doing the trainings. If you look at the racial numbers, minorities, 1,968. 1,732 are in our programs, 88%. So I know there's a stigma out there that we're like the old white guys club. That's just not true. We're the ones that are going out. We're the ones that are recruiting women's, blacks, new Americans, Latinos. And more than half of my building trades that I represent right now need people. IBW 683 is interviewing two at a time right now. They need people. Iron workers need people. Plumbers and fitters need people. Insulators need people. They may not need people on this project. They may not need people at Facebook. They may not need people at Sofidil, NTE Energy, Honda, 111 Building, the Morgue. They may, may need them at Fire Station 35. But we all need people, and I just think if we all collectively work together, I think that we can really do a good job to help the community. I just, if I just say it too, I've, I've had the pleasure of knowing Dorsey for quite some time and as soon as I got elected commissioner, he called me and said, look, we, I want to sit down with you and think strategically about how we can recruit more aggressively minorities. And, and so we hosted a dinner with uh, a number of pastors from around the city to begin a conversation about a deeper dive into a pipeline of minorities, uh, particularly locally. Uh, I think we're coming up on our second follow-up meeting uh, to really sort of create the infrastructure to have a stronger pipeline for the next generation of, of folks there. And so I do think uh, we're making progress. And I think, you know, I know you said you're, you're fully engaged here, but I feel like in our conversations there was an acknowledgement that there was a gap where unions weren't as aggressive as it should have been and now we're, we're beginning a process that's catching up. We're not caught up, but we're beginning a process to catch up. And I see efforts uh, that I've been a part of that I think are building the framework for a stronger pipeline. And like I said, we have the second meeting coming up. Mm -hmm. uh, and last time was a dinner with pastors from around the city. Um, and, and this time it's going to be peel the layer back one more layer and let's see what kind of organization that we can create. Um, to make sure that we're, we're creating a pipeline for minorities. And, and you're absolutely right, and I'm glad you brought that up because we did reach out together, and even before you were here, we were working on some things. And the reason why we reached out to Commissioner Boyce is, we're op and all the commissioners have been very helpful, is we're ser searching for advocates in the community that can help me do this because obviously I'm not, uh, I'm not telling you anything you probably don't know, but when I go to Columbus West or I go to Marion Franklin or I go to South, and I stand up and I give our three-minute spiel, you know, you can come into one of our programs, tuition free, books are paid for, the training is worth about twelve to fifteen thousand dollars a year. Every year you complete a year of the program, you're automatically going to get a raise until you eventually top out. You're going to have health insurance, you're going to have dental, you're going to have vision, you're going to have annuity, you're going to have a pension. No matter who you work for, if you work for Bruner on Monday, Sauer on Friday, and Kirk Williams the following week, your benefits don't change because they're all under one collective bargain agreement. 
So all that sounds great to these, these young kids I speak to and young ladies, no matter who I speak to, but it doesn't really hit except for the money part. So I need an advocate, and I talked to Nana about this this morning before I walked in very briefly, and we're going to get together. I need advocates like yourselves in the community to help me make those connections. Because, and I've said this a million times, and I apologize for repeating myself, <laughs> black, white, male, female, Latino, new American. If I lived in Driving Park, if I lived in Franklinton, if I lived downtown, if I lived in the hilltop, if I walked by a construction site and saw an Indiana, Kentucky plate, or hell, even a Ross County or Scioto County plate, and I was walking past that site to either go apply for unemployment benefits or to go work a job making eight, nine, ten, eleven dollars an hour, I would be pissed. I would be pissed. And I think we can all agree on that, and I think we can all work together to correct that problem. Thank you, Dorsey. Thanks, Dorsey. Yeah. Uh, do you other of our other guests want to speak? I didn't think I didn't think I would pass up a microphone. No. <laughs> I, no, I didn't say it. <laughs> good morning, good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. Thanks very much. My name is Otto Beatty, and uh, I have uh, experienced uh, this concept, and I'm going to call it a concept probably for the last 15, 20 years as, as an attorney and as someone who has participated in doing disparity studies. And let me just say, say to you, I, I've seen organizations and entities such as you all literally sit there in fear of trying to do this because of the fear of being sued. And it didn't make any difference whether it was goals a half a percent, a tenth a percent, or no percent. Uh, that is something that you do have to take into consideration. Um, and let me just say, I've also seen uh, many people that were, quote, experts, saying that you can't do this. Let me just say uh, to you, as somebody who's been through the wars, that's not true. That's not true. What you have to do, and I'm speaking strictly from a legal standpoint because I haven't actually read the plan, what you have to do is be aware of the procedures that you have to follow in order to be on solid ground. And it sounds like you're doing it with these hearings. Number one, you've got to decide whether or not what you're going to do is a legitimate state, city, county ambition. Is it something that you need to do uh, as county commissioners for this county? Is it necessary? Do you have to do it? Is it a legitimate interest? And it sounds like to me that, that, that you're very rapidly arriving at that decision that it does need to be done. The other thing uh, that is a little difficult is, is to get people, including the general public, because you're going to need their participation to understand that you can't approach this by saying, oh, well, we know how it's always been. You've got to document, document, document. Because what you have to do is to look at this whole litany of cases from Croson to our new Supreme Court and say, is it strict, can we pass, quote, strict scrutiny? Strict scrutiny. If you look at all the cases, all the Court of Appeals cases, and uh, I think some of you in this room probably know they've taken me to the Court of Appeals uh, with personal attacks and everything else, is have you, have you gone through a, a checklist and said in order for us to have a program, regardless of what the end result is, whether it's goals or whatever you want to call it, uh, have you gone through the procedure? Is it a legitimate county interest? Uh, is there any other way to accomplish what we're trying to do as a goal of diversity and inclusion? Is there any other way? Uh, and that, that, under those circumstances, you can certainly look at the past. But you've got to document the past because you want the program, obviously, to be successful. And you can't just look at the past and say, oh, yeah, we know what happened. You've got to look at the past and put it on paper. Now that's my suggestion. And to have a, have a checklist 
of everything that needs to be done for your own protection and for the success of the program. But my main point is don't let anybody tell you that this can't be done. That's just not the case. It can be done legally. I've seen it all over the country be done legally. It's been successful. But uh, the first thing, you, first thing you need to do, and it needs to be in, in your records, that you've made a decision uh, that this is, this is a legitimate state interest. Now, they use the term state in all these cases, talking about cities, counties, uh, county commissioners, state government, whatever. Just, just make sure that you go through the procedure, and there's an awful lot of people around that can help with this. Go through the procedure to protect yourself and protect the integrity uh, of the program. Because there's an awful lot of people that make their living try, trying to undermine uh, these projects. So uh, that's, that's uh, uh, what I'd like to add. Pardon my being late. I was at that downtown commission and had to, had to chair it. And so if there's uh, anything that uh, we as a community can do to help with this, uh, let us know. But just don't let anybody try and convince you that it can't be done. And that's my main point. The issue is following the right procedure um, and just be ready. But it's not that, it's really not that difficult. People try to make this awful difficult, but it's, it's really not as long as the proper procedure is filed. And I can't stress that enough, and thanks a lot for giving me a couple of moments. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know where to start because I used to be an apprentice 13 years old learning the way brick. And it's pleasing to hear what is being presented about the building trades and what Otto said. It is a procedure. It's a procedure of all of us working together to accomplish it. Uh, it's too hard for me to explain what we have done and what we're going to do. But in that remark, what we did, we're going to continue to do. There was a program for Columbus Public Schools that worked. There was a program for Ohio State University that worked. There was a program for the airport. Because when I asked the people from the Department of, uh, that was the Department of what's now, but I asked them, did they have a program? And they said, no, we had a goal. So all of the things that everybody has said is probably right, and it's in the mix somewhere. My partner's not here, but on behalf of Smoot, I just want you to know we're continuing this. We meet in our offices at right now. Nobody pays us to do anything. We just get people there and try to teach people what they need to do is learn trade to try to figure out what it is that they want to do and we're there our conference room is open once a month twice if you need it for people to be trained and we've been very successful and we've been very quiet about it because if we don't it gets too big and you can't accomplish it. I only say that I represent here Joe Bain Smoot with no authority but from the Smoot side, we're going to continue to do what we do because we were there. And some of you remember 584? Yeah, I'm the guy in the background that thought that could pay the legal bills. And I'm proud to say we got it done, but it was reversed. So the things that have happened in the past, like Otto said, those have to be taken into reality. But we're going to do what you tell us to do, and I'm glad to see there is going to be a process. And it can happen. You can hold me accountable. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Um, can I make a, a, a quick comment on that? Sure. In, in deciding whether or not this is a legitimate state or county um, goal or issue, I think you've got to remember that across the country, most of these, most of these programs it's like dropping a rock in the water and watching the waves go out. And um, I think that something like this 
as a part of your decision-making process, you can examine whether or not this, a program such as this, and I'm talking just generally now, not just on a particular project, meets some of the goals and helps with some of the goals that I have seen this county commission, uh, especially in the area of employment, as people have said, this county commission uh, try to bring about in Franklin County. Mm -hmm. And so y y y th there's, more, there's more in your evaluation than just helping some contractors. And, and uh, I'm trying to remember ever getting one of those checks from Mr. Smoot, but um, <laughs> I was... I was, I've been directly involved in this for a long, long time, and there's a lot of people around the country who have. But I think that uh, there's so many of the goals, especially unemployment goals, where you all have shown some real leadership, leadership that this can add to. I just wanted to make that additional comment. Thank you. Thanks, Anna. Yes, yes. Can I make a few comments yeah, too? Yeah. Of course. Yeah. You know. So let me let me begin with um, how much I value and appreciate all the input. You know, I just really think that. You know, as we had the NACO members uh, from all over the country here, and, you know, I was hosting my group. I had a group out yesterday, and, you know, they got to see all the, the great buildings and the great city that we have on the visual front. But what I talked to them about was what the mayor often refers to as the Columbus Way, you know, and that is a collaborative spirit that allows us to do things and accomplish things that many other communities just wouldn't be able to accomplish. And many times we'd say, oh, you know, here's the, the new uh, National Veterans Memorial Museum that we're building. And that's built with 100% private funding. And they say, how did you guys accomplish that? You know, and I just go down the list of, down the Scioto mile of all the things that was accomplished in a collaborative way. And, you know, it just, talk to them about the Columbus way, the, the spirit of collaborative effort that, that everyone owns a piece of our progress. And, and, and I feel no different about this conversation. You know, this is one of those things where uh, I'm glad to hear opposition. I'm glad to hear perspective. I'm glad to get history. I'm glad to get sort of the current status of access to jobs and whatnot. That is important to our overall process and considerations and and it's you know you're here and it is not hostile you know it you're here and it we may not agree on every aspect on everything but at the end of the day we're here together with the same goal and that's to improve where we are tomorrow versus where we are today and I'd be remiss I don't want to get I don't want to go into too long of uh, a speech here but my first couple months on the commission I spent touring the county jail and I was really disappointed at the condition of our jail not so much from a physical standpoint but from the ability to serve those folks who are coming through the system to ensure that they have a pathway to be successful when they leave that system and that protects you, that protects your neighbors, that protects our entire community. And so when I think about priorities, I'd like to see this corrections jail site uh, project move forward. And embedded in that is the Columbus way that everyone gets to have a piece of that process, not just in the building of the facility, but in the concept that, that everyone should benefit at every level of the way. And so from my standpoint, I don't want to see, commissioners, I don't want to see this delayed, um, but, I, but I'd maybe add some stipulations to it. And the first stipulation would be that we immediately establish this committee mm -hmm. that would uh, begin to work to identify these aspirational goals. That is a new development, a very new development as far as I'm concerned. And I believe that we have to aggressively capture that concept as part of this process ASAP. And so my recommendation would be that we immediately establish committee, I mean like tomorrow. Today is Tuesday, I mean by Wednesday, five o'clock, 
we have appointed this committee we've established the first day of the first meeting established what we're trying to get and and moving forward that quickly the second thing that is important to me uh, that a stipulation would be uh, and I, I say this on the record to our administrator and to the folks that report to him that they're on the hook too they're accountable and they know it mm -hmm. uh, the conversations that I've had with our administrator our deputy administrator they understand what this Commission is looking for what this Board of Commissioners are looking for and what we want to accomplish and they know they're on the hook they're accountable for what we expect in this process and so I want to be on the record right now to say you know this is not a we adopt the plan and everybody go their merry way and we'll see what happens when the corrections facility is finished this is a everyday grind that this process is complicated it's complex there are many parts of it we just have to have the right people at the table to help guide us through the process we don't have all the answers we don't have you know that between the three of us we're not endowed with with to just think of the plan and generate it and here we go that's where you all come in this has to work doing this together having people like Nana Watson driving us and letting us know when we've not quite gotten it you have to be a part of the process in order for this to work mm -hmm. people like Terrell Mock mm -hmm. people like Otto Beatty Lewis Smoot Dorsey Hager the only way this is going to work is if we invite them to be at the table and we establish what our goals are and our expectations are and that we know what the intent is well I think uh, you're absolutely so. right Commissioner and I think we've made ourselves very clear from the beginning that we want this to be as inclusive a process as we can make it this is the beginning this isn't the end and we as a board have always have had this wanting to be more expansive wanting to be more inclusive as as a board in all of our processes and in all of what we do and this is just another step along the way in this journey and we need the community to help us in that endeavor and so it, we thank you um, we need input my whole work life has been in social justice issues and yet I'm not an expert how could I be an expert in all of social justice issues I think it always depends on the community to make a better community so I thank all of you for being here and I think we need to move forward and Get but with, with the it. understanding that, you know, that I'd like to see yeah. this the only way I move forward yeah. is if we have an understanding that we're going to establish this working group right now uh, by by close of business tomorrow the folks will be appointed and named and that they're going to be charged with finishing the plan if you will uh, and and really sort of getting us where we need to be on these these aspirational goals and details I think the prosecutor's office should also be on that committee um, and I mean I, I just think that I I would only want to go forward if we can agree that that committee is to be established by close of business tomorrow and I would agree to that and add it to the tabled resolution that we've um, taken off the table maybe we just um, amend the resolution to say that we're moving forward right away and, and it should be can noted we, that? we can yeah, we need to do it I uh, appreciate all my, co my colleagues comments um, and we can certainly consider that amendment uh, here in just a second um, and thank you to all the speakers this morning uh, everybody uh, your comments uh, have been important mr. Washington uh, I appreciate what you had to say um, to Nana I want to say this to you uh, we you and I had some brief conversation this morning um, I think you understand I've been disappointed with the way this all transpired I had some serious uh, disappointment in the way this whole thing happened um, 
But I think you also will understand, and I hope everybody understands, that for the last nine years since I've been on the commission, uh, my intent, my intent, and, and this board's intent has been to move in this direction, and we've always intended to move this board and this body in this direction. Um, and we saw this project as a way to really get where we needed to be, which is why we moved this diversity inclusion pro, pro, uh, project the, when we did and, and, and why we did. So our intent was to be very bold here and to do what this board and this body believes to be the right thing for this community. We didn't, we didn't get it right, necessarily. We didn't get it right. Our intention was right. And maybe, I shouldn't say that we didn't get it right. The process maybe wasn't right. Uh, how it happened wasn't necessarily right, uh, and that's disappointing. The fact that we had to go through this particular, pro this little painful process for all of us wasn't particularly right. Um, but I think where we are today, and the, and the comments from everybody in the, uh, that were here today uh, were, were very valuable. Um, I don't think that there's a uh, an intent here, or there certainly wouldn't be a, a second to a motion to table again. I think the, the intent of the board, certainly of my colleagues, is to move this, this forward today, and I think we're going to go ahead and do that. But I agree with my colleagues that we need to we need to get everybody around this table. We need to have these voices. Tara, we need you. We need you to be a part of what we're doing going forward, Nana. We need you to be a part of what we're doing going forward. Um, I asked my staff this morning to make sure that, that you and I sit down very soon, very, very soon. Um, and so uh, I, I would love to, can we amend this, this resolution? Absolutely. Uh, you can. Before you do that, let me stand. Let me thank uh, all the folks that came down and served this committee. Uh, it's been If I can make a suggestion as to your resolution, I haven't even seen it. But let me make a suggestion. I've seen uh, people make error over time after time in this process. As a part of the resolution, can you make a finding that this is a legitimate state interest and have language like that or something close to it in the resolution? I would, this is a legitimate state interest for the county commission. I appreciate that, and I would only defer to one, uh, my deputy county administrator, and two, my legal, our legal counsel. Mr. Mr. O'Brien. Well, I think in any of those kind of findings, you have to have information evidence before you as part of the record to make the finding. So I don't know if the suggestion to table it would be necessary in that regard, but uh, you know, obviously to make a finding, Otto, you have to have information evidence in the record before them. I think they um, would want to have that at least. I'm not trying to put the force to the part. I'm not saying what your findings should be. I'm saying conceptually that this is a legitimate, a legitimate interest for the county commissioners. I mean, if it wasn't, you wouldn't be here. But I think the three of you can make a determination. This is legitimate. Uh, this is a legitimate subject for the county commissioners to dwell in. To take up. It's, it's, exactly. it's, I would agree with that. It's You're the, it, okay with it, that. Is, it is certainly the reason we've been having this conversation yeah. for the better part of the That it's time. legitimate for us to take on. Chris, do you have any thoughts? So you need some of the, uh, some of the uh, constitutional government. Got it. We does certainly that, want to meet the constitutional government. Thank do? you very much, Counselor. Commissioners, um, as um, uh, Mr. Bates. Oh. Oh, I, I apologize. Nana wants to just I, chime I in. I didn't wait until this long, but I do have one. Uh, uh, in terms of uh, amending the resolution, that absolutely is permissible. Uh, I could state something. You could see if you uh, agree with it, and then it would simply be a motion to amend the resolution. Seconded, uh, our clerk would call the roll, and then you would vote on the amended resolution uh, prior to passage. Uh, we can add in the be it resolved section of the resolution uh, that the uh, construction inclusion team be named by end of business tomorrow uh, with a date of the first meeting to be scheduled no later than the first of next week. Uh, and secondly, uh, that this resolution um, uh, affirms a uh, 
a legitimate county interest to move forward and hence the uh, reason for uh, adopting the uh, inclusion plan. And Kenneth Wilson County Administrator and thirdly the initial explicit uh, direction to the construction inclusion team to convene and develop aspirational goals as it relates to uh, workforce requirements, subcontracting and goods and services, the language that and deputy administrators did. Yes. And apprenticeship. Yeah. Now, counselors, are we all okay with this language? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Ms. Watson, please. I'm just going to uh, be very direct. I think all of you know that I am very direct. I uh, wanted to share, we're encouraged by this committee that you're going to put together. The only request from the NAACP is that you be honest, you be forthright, you keep your word and don't blindside us because we don't blindside you. And I just want you to, to keep that in mind when you ask the NAACP to come to the table. Don't blindside us because we won't do that to you. And thank you so much for um, affording the NAACP the opportunity to share our comments. Ms. Watson, you have my guarantee. Pardon me? You have my guarantee. Thank we you. are always direct and forthright. And in this inclusion plan, you will see still the number of other groups that are included because we believe underrepresented businesses should also be part of it. So you should know that up front. We appreciate everything everybody has done to make this a better plan. I move for 5, 10, 17 amended resolution. First, Commissioner, uh, um, uh, move to uh, uh, make a motion to amend the previously uh, paragraphs. 5, 10, 17. Correct. Second. Moved and second in voting. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. The amendment has been accepted. And now it's a motion now to... the amended resolution I move for approval. Correct. Amended 51017, move for approval. Second. Moved and second in voting. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. Amended resolution 510-17 has been adopted. And, okay. and I just want to add, so we will expect, the commissioners will expect to hear um, um, about the appointments, probably not today, certainly early tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And I, I think certainly uh, Ms. Watson and some of the others in this room, you know, we can talk about the, the particular people today, but, uh, but certainly I would encourage that Ms. Watson be invited to be a part of the, the uh, committee. Thank you, everyone, for that. We actually have another resolution on the agenda. Oh, God. <laughs> I forgot. Sanitary engineer. Oh, yeah. Mr. Renner, can you please come up and follow that? I cannot. <laughs> Sanitary engineer. Resolution number 527-17. Resolution authorizing immediate replacement of a section of sewer along Fairway Drive in Perry Township yes. in the amount of $63,340. Good morning, uh, Commissioners. Uh, Stephen Renner with the Department of Sanitary Engineering. Uh, one of the service areas that uh, we have uh, sanitary sewers is the Worthington Hills area. It serves about 940 residents, I'm sorry, uh, homes. Um, and a three to five foot section of the sanitary sewer on Long Fairway Drive has partially collapsed. Um, and we were, are requesting via this resolution uh, that you declare this an emergency via 308.87 and um, allow us to uh, move forward with the selected contractor to effect repairs immediately. I will move approval of 527.17. Second. <coughs> Moved and second in voting. Commissioner Brown? <coughs> yes. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. Resolution number 527-17 has been adopted. Commissioners, thank you. All right. Do we have any uh, journalizations, Antoine? They're not today. All right. That concludes our business for the 25th of July, 2017. We'll see everybody next week. Good job. Good you too, man. Thanks.